just got off the bus at Undu Cohen bus stop just behind me there and this bus stop I'm actually gonna show you off to the side has this really beautiful arch I think it's really artistic um, and there is the monorail that goes to and from Mayahama Station to Disneyland Sea and Disneyland, Tokyo Disneyland. So today we are gonna be at Tokyo Disney Sea. So the bus stop is actually pretty close right in front of me. I'll pan around so you can see what I'm seeing. This is the volcano at Tokyo Disney Sea. So this is all of our first time going to this park. We've never been there before, We've never been to Japan at all. Off to the left, it looks like there's a little skate park, I'm guessing. And then Mayahama Station is, I think, the hub for the subway and JR trains that is the closest station to Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea. The bus, however, gets you a little bit closer if you get off at Undu Cohen stop, which is the stop that we just got off on at. And this brings us closest to Tokyo Disney Sea. Tomorrow, when we go to Tokyo Disneyland, we're gonna stop at Mayahama Station because that one is supposed to get us closest to Disneyland. So we are going back and forth by bus because it's a little bit quicker than trying to navigate the subway from where we're staying. And again, this is Yurayasu and it's about an hour from Tokyo so that's why we switched apartments we were staying in Tokyo if you've seen any of my other videos I'm sure I'm uploading those first about the apartment we're staying at or we're staying at in Tokyo and the apartment that we're staying at in Yurayasu so we're now crossing and there's probably a lot of traffic noise sorry about that there are some storage lockers as you enter the park. I think for people that have luggage that they need to store before coming into the park, that's somewhere that you can store them for the day. So that's actually really convenient because I know on our last day here, we have a later flight. So we are probably going to be looking for storage lockers somewhere and I'm not exactly sure where yet depends on what everybody wants to do on the last day but they also have storage lockers at some of the main subway stops so I'm not all that worried about it there up ahead it says Tokyo Disney Sea Station that's where the monorail comes in you can kind of see it peeking out from up there we're gonna get in the security line over here I already got our tickets so we just have to get into the security line and show them our ticket we don't have to bother waiting in the ticket booth line which is over there where all of those other people are standing we can just go straight down here where there are fewer people to get straight to security Easter, so we are here during the Easter celebration, 
And I really like these buildings. They look actually like an older style building that you might see maybe in Italy or somewhere in Europe, I'm thinking, is what it reminds me of. I'm not sure what it's supposed to be, but that's what it reminds me of. And that's a Galleria, so that's a gift shop. I can see people already in there. I'm not sure what the line is for, though, already to get into that gift shop. Maybe it's more than a gift shop. There's more gift shops on that side. Wow, that is a big line. I wonder what they're in line for. And you can see the big volcano up ahead and those buildings, actually. I don't know if you can see them very well. They look kind of like Moroccan themed to me, but it looks like a huge castle. This way? What's off this way? Oh, the Adrian Coast. There's Mama Biscotti's Bakery. So I think this is. Should we go around in a circle? That looks like the Colosseum over in the distance to me. And then there's a closer look at their fortress castle. We're gonna make our way over that way. Actually, that bridge over there looks like the bridge in Florence. And then yours is so good. Oh, and that over there, it's off in the distance, but it looks like a steamboat. So, and then there's a restaurant. There's a stationery store over there. Actually, I would love to look in there later. Oh, look at how cute. I love this little neighborhood walkway. You can probably even just walk around and linger and explore. Right now we're trying to find a couple of rides. One is 2,000 Leagues Under the Sea and Journey to the Center of the Earth. So we're trying to find the entrance to those two. And I see a lot of people going this direction, so I think actually it's over here. And I can see, oh, what's that? This might be the line to something. Let's go see. This might be Journey to the Center of the Earth. Let's see what the wait time is. We decided to just get our fast pass. This is the fast pass line for Journey to the Center of the Earth because the standby line is one hour and it's just after 8 o'clock. I think it's about 8.30 right now. So it's already crowded. And even to get our fast pass, it's crowded, but it's going to be a lot less waiting than an hour. So we're going to do this and then see if we can ride 2,000 weeks under the sea. Okay, we just got done getting our fast pass for journey to the center of the earth and now we're in line for 2,000 leagues under the sea. Looks like standby time is 35 minutes. So we just got off of 2,000 leagues under the sea. I really liked it. I liked how you get the sensation that you're going underwater because it feels like there's like a pressure kind of build up and then you just see all these bubbles coming up and then there's a bunch of sea creatures under there and I really liked the theming the um, like the iron boat and um, it looked kind of steampunk design to me a little bit but now we are on our way to Lost River Delta area and we're trying to find the ride Raging Spirits and Indiana Jones. There's a train passing by Disney Sea Electric Wheel Railway. So we have Marine Life Institute over there. So what is this area still? Oh, we're in Arabian Coast right now. So just on the 
other side of Arabian Coast area is water ride. Not exactly a water ride, but it's in the water. That looks pretty cool. Are you controlling it? Or? I think they are. Looks like it's on a trackless route. Oh, and then there's a whirlpool in the middle. That looks cool. So just on the other side of this is Lost River Delta. This area with this ride here that we're looking at is Arabian Coast. So that's cool. Okay, I think we have found, I'm guessing that's Indiana Jones, because that looks like it would be the temple. So I wonder if we get to it going this way. This is early in the morning. Well, not super early. We got here early in the morning, but there's still really long lines. Really crowded here. And unfortunately, I think we were, we happened to be here during their spring break. So kids are out of school and a lot of locals are here. So even though we are during the week, it's because it's also their spring break. Oh, temple site. They're also having meet and greets right now with the characters, and there are standby lines for that as well. Oh, here's the Indiana Jones entrance. So that is the Indiana Jones ride. So let's see. I also wanted to go on Raging Spirits, which is back here also. But we haven't come across it yet, and we're not able to get our next fast pass. Oh my gosh, that's a 120 minute wait. So we should probably get our fast pass for that. So let's see where Raging Spirits is then. Oh, there's a grill. Yucatan Base Camp Grill. Maybe we should get lunch there later. Okay, that must be Raging Spirits over there. Is this the line? Let's get in line. We just got off of Raging Spirits. It was really cool. There you can see the view from the exit area. There's lockers for oversized bags here. So I'm just standing here waiting for everybody else. Other people were kind enough to mention to us that we could get a significantly shorter wait time if we went on in as single riders. And so we waited maybe 10, 15 minutes tops for this ride. And the regular standby time was 180 minutes. So that is a significant difference. We were going to just wait until it was time for us to get our next fast pass and so other people overheard us talking about that and just mentioned to us that Raging Spirits and Indiana Jones are the only rides that will allow you to go on as single riders and skip the really long wait time. So as soon as everybody else gets off the ride, then we are planning on going through the single rider line uh, just like we did on this one for Indiana Jones next. We are in the Mermaid Lagoon area. And of course it's beautifully themed. We're looking for something to eat for lunch. Actually, we're headed over to that side, the Arabian Coast area, to get some curry, chicken, and rice. There's one of the boat rides. 
I thought it was packed today, but Dominique thought that it just looked like any other Disney park as far as guests in the park. Let's see, the name of the place we're looking for is Casba's Food Court. So that's what we're looking for, Casba's Food Court. There's a little thing right here. Acroba Marketplace, I'm guessing that's souvenirs. Caravan Carousel is behind us. Oh, so inside, underneath that dome area is a big carousel. Oh, there's the food court over there. Looks like they have a big line. I've noticed that they have lines, big lines for food everywhere. So they don't have wait times for the food, so not sure how long it's going to take. But once we get inside, I'll let you see what we ordered. Actually, I was wrong. That wasn't the line for the food. That was a line for something else. So this is what's on their menu. Beef curry, chicken curry, vegetable curry, salad in a cup, tandoori chicken, coconut custard, and peach milk strawberry jelly dessert. Actually, I've tried that at one of the convenience stores. It looked really good. So we just got done eating here at Casba Food Court and all, I guess three of us ordered the chicken curry, Dominique ordered the vegetable curry and Dominique and Noah really liked what they ordered. I thought that the rice was a little overcooked and kind of pasty, mushy and then the curry sauce was on the sweet side so all in all i thought it was okay but i wouldn't want to eat it again so anyway we are going to go over to the american area to get our fast pass for tower of terror and I think we're also probably going to look in some um, shopping areas. Noah is looking for a sweatshirt. I think I already told you guys. Anyway, so we're just going to see what we find there, look around, and then try to get on some more attractions that don't have long waits, although that might be a little tricky because it seems like all of the rides here have long waits. So we will keep making our way around and I'll likely uh, check in with you guys over by the Tower of Terror because I wanted to show you how to get a fast pass if you print out your tickets at home. So I will check in again in a few minutes. So we are on our way to get fast passes for Tower of Terror. Wind is kicking up. And it's just gonna be Herb and I riding the Tower of Terror because the kids are too afraid. That's what it looks like from the outside. And whenever we find the kiosk to get the fast pass I'll show you how to do it with the printout if you get your tickets at home and you just have a printout because when you enter the park they don't change your printout for a regular ticket which makes getting fast passes much easier well I guess either way it's just as easy but I kind of like to have the Disney ticket as a souvenir afterwards. I don't really see where the Fast Pass kiosk is though. Let's see. I'm gonna keep going down here. Sometimes they're right near the entrance. That says Fast Pass over here. Oh, I like that big steamboat. I can't remember what that is. I'm going to have to look at the map. 
This is the American waterfront area. Let's see. Oh, and there's a gift shop. It's called Tower of Terror Memorabilia. Here are the Fast Pass kiosks. I'm gonna go down here. Okay, it's loud over here. Sorry about that. These are out of order. No wonder why there's no lines for them. So all of the lines are over here because these are the ones that are working. This is what the Fast Pass kiosk looks like. Here is the unfolded ticket and when it's folded, you just fold it and put it in there and then out comes the Fast Pass ticket. We're getting two, so we're gonna do it again. And there's our other ticket. So it started out with just this printout and then you have to just fold it so it fits in that little slot. And that's how you get your fast passes with your printout at home. So we are in line for Journey to the Center of the Earth. It's finally time for our fast passes. So we are queuing up here in the fast pass line. That's the view. And so far they haven't allowed any pictures on any of the rides, so I'm guessing it'll be the same for this, but we'll see. Otherwise I'll just check in after. vehicles and I liked all of the creatures that they had. Uh -huh. um, I just wish it was like, like a little bit longer. And there's one really big drop. It was yeah. like intense but it was short so it wasn't like too too scary. Yeah. So now we are going to Nemo and Friends. And there was a big line for that all day so Hopefully I'm really good. curious about what what all of the hype is around that, so we'll let you know what we think after. We just got off of Nemo and Friends. It was really cool. I can definitely see the hype now, and I can see why people stand in line to go on that. It's simulation, but it feels like you're in the submarine itself with everybody else and the way they move that vehicle or that room i guess makes you feel like you're in the submarine and um dominique was dominique and i were talking just after the ride and she was commenting on how the detail of the rides really added to the experience to make it seem like more fun but also make you feel immersed in the ride yeah it was really good yeah i thought that was awesome much better than the california one it the california is way one you different. just go in a submarine and look at water there's really nothing in there right you just kind of move through and it's really like not a lot of movement 
and you have to climb down in that submarine and then you just sit and you look at yeah even the presentation of this was so was so yeah. cool yeah so it's definitely something that you need to experience and it's a lot um, darker now because it's getting late. We've been on a lot of rides already. We still have the Tower of Terror and um, the Aquatopia ride to do, which we're gonna do pretty soon. But since we're losing a lot of light because it's getting so dark and my device seems to run a little bit on the dark side already, I think we're gonna go ahead and end the video. It's really cold out here too. Yeah, it is super cold. Definitely look at the weather before you come out here and don't underestimate the cold. If it says that it's, it's cold, it's probably even more cold than what it says. Right, because waiting in the queues outside has been tricky, and Friday is supposed to be really windy. Yeah, it wouldn't be as bad if it wasn't so windy, but mm -hmm. I mean, we're still having fun, but it's just hard for your body to stay out here because it's right. so cold. So in general, what do you think about Disney Sea? I really think that this is awesome. I've have, have, I'm having a, like, a lot of fun. I love everything about the um, experience. What about you? I really like it. It's a little bit different than I expected. I think I expected more rides and like more it's thrill like there's a lot. rides. We haven't gone on everything, so it's definitely enough to keep you busy for the entire day. But yeah, it's we haven't even still... taken any breaks or anything. We've been constantly doing something. Right, that's true. So I think there's a lot to do. So I think it's good. I know, for some reason I was just thinking there was going to be more thrill rides. I think there is a good mix of like calmer rides mixed with thrill rides. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. And we're definitely winding down. Our morning on E, guys. <laughs> we got up at 5. Um, we were trying to get here at Rope Drop, but that didn't happen. Um, so we got here around 9, 10 ish. Like a nine or ten? No, actually it was like nine about four nine. It was yeah. about eight thirty or eight forty five. And like I said, we haven't been taking any breaks. We've been moving and We've moving and moving. So by, you're just kind of like by the end of these three and a half days, we're probably going to be exhausted because we got a three day park ticket and then a after six park ticket. So three and a half days at these parks definitely more than enough time to see and ex do everything experience everything so anyway thanks for watching i really hope that you all liked the video please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one bye